Okay. Ready, everyone? Here we go. You're going to learn Yiddish here in this in this in this online yeshiva. Also, Yiddish. Okay, the words of the Rebbe, Melech Hamashiach. V. Bavust, as is known, this is a sicha from like 1960. I'll tell you what, 1966. Good based almost. As Bavust and the Geula from Kavit Kurushes Morichami, it's known that from the redemption of my father-in-law from Zion. Far Shikung, we from his arrest that his freedom was Yud in Yud based in Yud Gibel Tamus. Dinstuk Yud based Tamus Dinstuk Hot Men the Rebin on Tuesday, which was Yud based Tamus, the Rebbe was informed Yavan Azazvet. Anka Gomen Pekuda that there arrived the order to by free him that he should free him from from the Shiki, from Farshikun from his arrest in Kastroma from when he was sent in exile. Farshikun means exile, I'm sorry, exile in Kastroma. Kastroma is the city. You can look it up in uh, in uh, Google. It's the city way in the what is it called? The, the the eastern part of Russia. Nora Zoy v Yenem Tog is Dort the Misra because in that day, on the 12th of Tammuz, that day, the offices of the Memshala Gaven Geshilas and they were locked. Why? But you got to move up a little bit. One second, I have. Hello. What's this? What is this? One second, one minute. Huh? Hebrew? Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's try, I'll try to open it up. Click on the screen. Can I open it up? What do I do? Down. Oh, click on, the on the top one? Let's try. I don't know what to do. That's it. Just click on the screen and you click control. Yeah, my, uh, my abilities, that's, okay, here we go. Scroll, scroll down, please. Can I scroll down? Is there, oh, yeah. Am I scrolling down? Yeah, you're scrolling. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. So the offices were closed. Therefore, the um, he had to wait. He was really freed on the 12th, which this year comes out on Shabbos. And, but his actual letter of, uh, of release was the next day in Yud Gimel Tammuz. Gleich, the Yud Beis Tammuz had the Rebbe Gezakt immediately, as soon as the Rebbe heard that he was freed, so he said a mimer, which is the mimer that we're learning, we're, the name of the mimer we're learning, that the Rebbe is explaining here, Zok the mimer in Chassidus, in the Pesach, Hashem li ba'ozrai ba'ani ere basarai. That's the mimer we're learning here, right? The mimer that we're learning here is an explanation. That's the mimer of the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe's mimer that he said. So as soon as the Rebbe was given the news that he was freed, what did he do? He said a mimer. And there were Hasidim there that heard. Kostroma is a, is a city. <clears throat> it's, it's a sort of an abandoned city, but it's a city. They have a big uh, town hall over there and everything. And there were Hasidim that came there. It says there is even one of the Hasidim, Michal Dworkin, that he came there and he already has made a, built a mikveh. He had a, 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 before the Rebbe got there, they had already begun to begin a, building a mikveh. It could even be that it was already building a mikvah, and he looked around for Jewish children, and he started organizing teaching of children. We'll, talk, we'll talk, learn about this. The teaching Jewish children, which was exactly the reason the Rebbe was sent into exile. Anyway, when the Rebbe got the news that he was freed, this is on Yud Beis Tammuz, which this is basically, uh, he was there for like a week in this exile place. On the Pesach, Havaya libo zrai vaynir besanai. God is, is a sentence that King David said in Psalm. What is it? One eighteen. God is among my helpers, and I will see revenge on my enemies. That's what King David said. No, if Morgan, and then in the morning he said this mimer on Yud Beis Tammuz, and then in the morning, when it was Yud Bey Gimel Tammuz, Nachan Shichor, after he actually was freed, Hotar Gazakti said a second mimer on Chasidus. And that began with the word Boruch HaGomel L'chayavim Tovos Shigomolani Tov. Both of these memorim are found in Kuntresim Aleph of the Rebbe. 
the second mimer, that he said a second mimer, which is, let us bless the one who gives favors to those who are not deserving. That you did good to me. Boruch HaGomel L'chayavim. Blessed is the one who does good to the undeserving. He does good to the undeserving that you did good to me. That's the bracha we make on on uh, on uh, Boruch HaGomel. Right? So the first day on Yud Beis Tammuz, the Rebbe made a blessing that Hashem should be with my helpers. Hashem should be with my helpers. You'll see it. We'll see it in a second. And the second day he gave that God is, I'm thanking God for the good that he did, did for me. Okay, says the Rebbe is in Plug. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just moving this thing improperly. This is maddening. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Need the next page. Okay, the token from No Pasuk Hashem Libo is right. The meaning, what it says, that God is with me and my helpers. Is my pointer? Is my port pointer pointing? Is this thing moving to you? Can you see it? Please don't move it. Please. Don't, don't. <laughs> it's just so. <laughs> Maddening. Okay. Their token from Pesach, the point of this sentence, the meaning of the sentence, that God, Hashem, li Ozrai, that God should be with my helpers and I will see revenge on my enemies. Simply, it means it's a bakash, it's a request. King David is requesting, Hashem, be with my helpers. Or if atid, in the future. Men bet as a zolzain, we ask in God that it should be, Hashem should be with my helpers, and then I will see the revenge on my enemies. Masha Inkin, which is not the case, the mimer that he said on the second day, Borach Agoma Lachayvim Tovos. This is giving praise and thanks to God because of what was in the past. Namely, that God did me good. Good, okay, so what? Says the Rebbe, it's not so good. doesn't make any sense. In Plug, if you look at this, it's not understandable. Nisht verstandig. The pastors darf always come, and it should have come out that when the Rebbe got the news of the good news that he was being freed, which that's on the 12th of Tammuz, Hatzal of Shichur, then he should have made the ben blessing HaGomel. Then he should have dunk and he should have thanked God about that. When Eresh Dernach, and then afterwards, that then there's a place to make an additional request on the future, that God should be with my helpers. Voldach men, then Matim, then would be fitting the, 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 then he should say, afterwards he should have said the first mimer of Hasidus, and then as the, the first mimer of Hasidus should be Borah HaGomel. And afterwards he should have asked, God help me in the future. So again, what's the question? When the Rebbe got, now this is a very deep thing, we're going to see what the deep thing. The Rebbe got the news he was freed. As soon as the Rebbe got the news that he was freed on the 12th, he said, God, be with me with my helpers. Please be with me among my helpers. <clears throat> Which the Rebbe is going to say that doesn't make any sense because really God was the one that was helping him. There were no other helpers except for God. And I will see my enemies in the future. That's what he said on the first day. And the second day, he thanked God for being free. Says the Rebbe, it should be the opposite way around. First of all, you should thank God for being free. It was a big miracle. The 12th day of Tammuz, the, the Rebbe was supposed to be there for three years in exile. He got the news. He was totally free. He should have said, thank God. Brucha Gomel. Then afterwards, he could make an additional. Said, Hashem, just like you were with me now, I, please be with me in the future also. 
Well, that's how it should be. But it wasn't. It was exactly the opposite. First of all, the Rebbe requested <clears throat> that Hashem should, in the future, be with me and my helpers. And then he gave thanks to God. Why? Who's going to say a big... Maybe we can say, yes, about the Rebbe, because the Rebbe, <clears throat> because that the Rebbe, so let... Yeah. Maybe we can say that because the Rebbe had by hearing the Basurus, when the Rebbe heard the good news, is Nidbekent Machen, he couldn't, maybe he couldn't make the bracha on the first day because he wasn't really free. He wasn't really freed yet. So therefore, Zichr as thus Nid Yatse Sakana, and he wasn't really out of danger. They could have, you know, said, listen, we're not going to give you the, 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 the letter of freedom. So therefore, it's not fitting that the Rebbe on the first day should say, thank you, God, because he wasn't really free yet. Maybe we can say that, yes. But let's see, how do I do this? Here? There's supposed to be a thing over here to move to the next page, right? Here we go. Next. I got it. I got it. I found it. Oh, but leave, it leave it like this. Leave it like this. Oh, but... Oh, but... Another ten od eso da code, od eso da code. How do I turn this thing off? Call it okay. Aber but as father zich beer, this has to be understood. No, don't make it bigger enough. She is a zicher zach. It's certain as oich de besura that the news that the Rebbe got that he was free is this should have brought praise in God. So he didn't want to say brocha gomel. He could make another language of praise. Now with borcha gomel. He should have said something else about thanking God. For instance, Hallel Hashem. Right? And then afterwards he should say, Hashem li bozri. Why was he saying? Okay, says the Rebbe like this. In general, in addition to this, which the redemption of the Rebbe was a big, big miracle, there's also uh, Farga Kuman, Kama Vakama, there were also a lot of other miracles. One of the biggest miracles was, <clears throat> and I'll, maybe I'll say this outside. Well, no, I'll read it inside. Svishin Zay, uh, many other miracles happened within this big miracle of the Rebbe being freed. Now, again, we can't stress this enough how evil the communist regime was and how total was their power. It was the communist regime really believed and taught that anyone that had any other idea that in any way did not totally agree with their brand of communism could be killed. They were enemy of the world. They were enemy of mankind. And that's like, what do you call it? Marxism, pure Marxism. Stalin even had like Trotsky. Trotsky was a terrible, awful person, but he had a different brand of communism. And Stalin's had him killed. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was the, the, the ultimate opposition to communism. He had the ultimate uh, the, the destructive force against communism, the belief in God. Belief in God was the opposite, total opposite of communism. Communism taught basically there's no meaning to life. There's no God. There's no, you just live, you live, and you, your needs have to be taken care of. That's all man is concerned with, is that his needs should be taken care of. He has, he has intellectual needs, he has uh, emotional needs, he has physical needs. That's all man is. That's, that's what man is. The Frida Karebi is saying man's purpose is to serve Hashem. We're here to serve Hashem. We're here to make this world a perfect place according to Hashem. What? What? This was the, they, they wanted the first night that the Rebbe was taken into prison. It was a miracle, first of all, that he wouldn't, wasn't arrested sooner. But the night that he was taken, he was supposed to have been killed immediately. That was the order. And somehow or other, miraculously, it got mixed up and he wasn't killed on, on that night. Not until that night. But, here, but there are also other big miracles that happened within this whole thing. So the Rebbe getting out was, it was incredible. And there was simply no way that it could be that the Rebbe was going to get out. Uh, but there's other miracles that happened also. Among these miracles is a me'ura was alpha pi b'shato had men of them nit gelegt kain or acht, even though that 
when this other miracle was happening, nobody paid any attention to it, is Abur Itza. But now, after many, many years, we can now, thinking about this, we can, when we can think about this in a calm way, in an objective way, we can benemt men as be'emes, that really this was an amazing, amazing miracle, no less great than the miracle of the Rebbe. What was the miracle? What happened? What happened? Ah. In fact, it was totally above nature. The order, the Seder in this country of Russia was that all of the people in the country were tremendously they're, they're under observation by the country. I remember one of my teachers, Rabbi Moshe Naparstak, said that that's one of the reasons why Russia is so underdeveloped and backward. He said, because all of the people, one third of the people under Stalin, and Stalin ruled for how long? 30 years, something like that. Ruled for how long? 30 years, something. That Stalin, the whole time that Stalin was ruling, that one third of the people were spies. Everyone was spying on everybody else. And spies, there were spies that spied on spies. Everyone was spying on No one could make a move without it being known. Azoi is there much of, so it was also, also now. This is 1960s. And how much, and also now it's the same thing. In, the, in 1966, this is, communism was very strong, right? They had this, they're saying anyone can get into Russia, but nobody can get out. Allah has come, come on, much more so in the time of Stalin, and especially anything that was connected with the imprisonment of the Rebbe. It says all those people were connected to the Rebbe. It says there was a chipus mechupas, that they searched, they, they investigated the Rebbe, they tore apart his whole house, everything, everything, every detail. Everyone was looked at with seven eyes. The all of us, anyone that had any connection whatsoever with the Rebbe. What's the miracle? Despite all this, immediately when the Rebbe was arrested, <clears throat> when the Rebbe was arrested, there was tens of Hasidim and tens of non-Hasidim that threw themselves totally into efforts to get the Rebbe freed. They did not think, and they did not consider at all with their own health or welfare. They did not think, cook. they did not look at any of the dangers which were involved by being connected to the Rebbe. They worked day and night. They had, in fact, and they worked in a revealed way until the point they even sent letters. And they sent letters and they signed with their own names. Unachmer, even more. Veren Zich Alain, they alone went to the, to, the, to the government and to those people that arrested the Rebbe, the high officials. Zayin and Gaven Far far ant verkelech faran psagdin in order to to re, uh, rescind the the decree against the rebbe they worked day and night when the acher calls in after this we see an amazing thing all of those people that worked to free the rebbe some of them weren't even religious some of them had no connection whatsoever not only to 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 to, to, to to the Hasidim, but to, to Judaism at all. None of them, but kind, there did not come any Ein Silikar, even one single one of them, which happened anything bad in any way whatsoever. Not in speech, not in the not in speech, and Ogea Lenefesh, not in and things, I'm sorry, not in things which were relevant to the soul, and not things which were relevant, relevant to the body. None of them were hurt, and they worked for tens of years in the most revealed way against the biggest enemies, and nothing bad happened to any of them, as we'll continue, God willing, tomorrow.